praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The hallelujah is not commensurate to what the Lord is doing in our midst. Praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Okay. Maybe I have to explain the season that God has brought us into. We are talking about the power of his resurrection. This is not the power that Elisha, Elijah exhibited. This power is greater than the power that God manifested at creation. <laughs> and then now God is saying that this is what I, this is the season that we are in, that he has brought us into to manifest things that, is, that are beyond our understanding. We are talking about this immeasurable power. This is the season that God has brought us into. So when, we, when I say praise the Lord, because in your hallelujah, God is doing something. Praise the Lord. Oh my God, church, maybe you don't understand what you are saying. You know, David played with this fire, with this power, Elisha, Elijah, but we are talking the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Ah, from the dead. Praise the Lord again. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, we want to thank you for another beautiful Tuesday that you have brought us into. Thank you for all your doings in our lives, in the lives of the families that are attached to us, in your house, in your church. We are so grateful. We are not taking anything for granted. The fact that we are breathing in and breathing out without paying. No, none of us is have a bill for breathing your in and out of your oxygen. No one has a bill. No one has a bill of, you know, you being able to use our bodies freely. Nobody has a bill. So Father Lord, we are not taking all these things for granted. We say thank you. Thank you for your great doings in our lives that we are able to see, we are able to walk, that we have appetite to eat. We have not gotten any bill for, from you regarding that. And so we say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we want to also thank you for the season that you have brought us into. The season when, where you want to manifest your power like never before in our lives. We are so grateful. Thank you for that, what the things that you're doing in our lives already. Thank you for the things that you still, you're still doing now and the things that you will do in the future. We are so grateful. Tonight, we yield ourselves into the Holy Spirit's hands. Holy Spirit, what can we do without your help? We don't even know how to pray. All right. So we yield ourselves until we yield every aspect of the service into your hands. And we ask that you tabernacle with us and help us, direct us. in the Help us to pray the right prayers. Help us. We also pray for everyone that will be joining us online. Tabernacle in their homes, Holy Spirit. Touch their hearts. Let them align themselves to that which the Lord is doing in our midst. To, to that which the Lord has prepared for us tonight. And let the name of the Lord alone be glorified. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You're all welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God Restoration Assembly House of Favor Prayer Meeting Faith Clinic. There's a reason why it is called, it is also called Faith Clinic. It is also called Faith Clinic because we have to come to receive in faith. So tonight I, I encourage us that our faith will rise up to receive all that God has in store for us. And for those of us who, have, who are yet to send the reminders to people, please send reminders to people. Let them know it is time for us to come together to pray. It is time for us to come and receive from our Father. So please send the reminders to people. And for those of you that are walking into the sanctuary, we ask that the Holy Spirit will quicken your footsteps. So at this time, we're going to invite the best voices in the world to lead us in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. 
Hallelujah. Wave your hands to your maker. God is good. He's a wholesome God. Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. The Hosanna, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Hosanna in the Let my king be led that I oh, oh, son. somebody leave Jesus. I am oh, son. yes, I can authority. He dies. I, I, I let my king, let my king believe that I, oh, oh, son. I, I, somebody leave Jesus. I, I, oh. Sana, yes, he died. I let my king, let your king, let my king believe that I will turn out. Okay. One more time, everybody, in Jesus, I am. Oh, I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. When I come be to your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. In your presence, there is a Lord. As your spirit is moving, in your presence, anointing praise to you. When I come, I come into your presence. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Come into your presence. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Your presence, there is anointing, as the spirit moves around me. Your presence, anointing, praise to you. In your presence, anointing, praise to you. In your presence, your presence. Anointing brings in the presence of the Lord. Anointing brings in your presence. In your presence, the devil must bounce out. Sickness must turn in the presence of America. In your Every shall I must met down in the presence of the Lord in your presence. Oh, every shall I say the hell must fight for Jesus. Sickness must bow, reproach must bow, vaccination must bow in the presence. In your presence, anointing praise to you. 
damn those hands for Jesus. Damn those hands for Jesus. Our God is good. Thank you, Jesus. You have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given the victory. That's what I see. Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard? What the Lord has done, he has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me victory. That's what I see. Oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, yeah. Oh, say, yeah. We go with the awesome. Oh, say, yeah. We go with the I say, Father, Father, let Jesus aya, 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 aya. I say, let Jesus aya, 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 aya. I say, let Jesus aya, 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 aya. Hey, have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me victory. That's what I say. Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we sing. Oh, say, yeah. I said, oh, say, yeah. Hey. Oh, say, yeah. We don't we know. Oh, say, yeah. Somebody needs your sign. Lifting my hand, I am high and high. I say, lift this us this kind God, oh, I never see his die for. This kind God, oh, let that be your only name. This kind God, this kind God, I never see, I never see. I shot through the world. There is no God. This kind God, oh, I never see, I never see. Life, oh. This guy God, oh, bless it. I said, this guy God, oh, I never see that. This guy God, oh, bless it. Hey, there is something. There is something. There is something. There is something. Something, it's your healing, it's a miracle, it's your body, it's your anointing. There is something that makes me come into his presence. There is something that God's coming to his presence. It's a 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 
Ha 
up I just want to encourage us and maybe just pray um, one prayer before he comes up um, what the Lord wanted um, we, we welcome everyone uh, our online um, members welcome welcome to the redeemed Christian Church of God restoration assembly house of favor prayer meeting faith clinic we are so glad that you're able to join us tonight we pray that the same grace that is operating here will be operating in your homes in Jesus' mighty name. I just want to encourage you to just link to what God is doing. Please align yourselves. Uh, don't take it for granted. God has brought us into a very great season. You know, for every time, this year in this church is a year of our overflowing blessings. But for every season, God brings us into that which he has prepared for us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. 
and he has spoken through his prophet to us of his intention to us in this season. So let's not take it for granted. Let's align ourselves. Let's become what the word of God needs to be needs us to be in Jesus' mighty name, so that we also can be a blessing uh, to the world. So we know we all know we are in the season of what is exceeding what power. So tonight, what God has given me is, the topic says, the generosity of God's power. So last month, we talked about the generosity of what? Of his grace, right? And now, we're talking about the generosity of God's power. We'll be praying regarding this. I just want us to have a better understanding of what God is doing in our midst. Um, we, We all know that God is generous, right? We talked about it <clears throat> last, um, we talked about it in our last month we talk, when we we're talking about the generosity of his grace. What God does is that God, all that God knows is to give and give. The Bible calls him the breasted one. You know what th- that, that means? For every woman here, when a woman is pregnant, <clears throat> uh, I mean, when the woman has a baby, and you need to breastfeed the baby. And you're not able to. So say, for instance, you go out, right? And in your travels, you, you don't have a pump. Or you don't have anything to, and the baby is not with you. A, a woman, a mother will be feeling pain. It's like you have to express that pain. So when you get home and you get the baby in your hands, what do you do? It's like you want to put both in the mouth of the baby. You want it so that you feel relieved. And you find the milk going over the baby's face, the nose all over. That is how God is. Our God is generous and he gives. He has and he gives to us generously. You know, there are some people that are generous in nature. They are generous. They want to give. So, but there's a limit because they don't have much. Even though they are generous. But our God has what? He has much more than you can imagine. And he's what? And he's what? He has a lot and gives you what? And gives a lot. At any slightest opportunity, he wants to give to you. Remember, I said I'm talking about the generosity of God's power. So, because tonight I want us to see another aspect of God's generosity. And that is the generosity of what? Of his power. We're talking about is the exceeding power. So the generosity of God. And that's what God has brought. The season he has brought us into that. His generosity power will hit us like never before in Jesus' mighty name. Let's quickly look at Luke 5, verse 17. The New King James Version, Luke 5. There's no need that you come with tonight. That his generosity will not what? Will not fix except you don't believe. We're talking about the generosity. I told you that God is what? Is generous. In fact, let me read the scripture about that. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8, uh, before we go to Luke 5, 17. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. I, I, I was going to read it, another uh, translation here. So the translation is the, the FBB. So I'm going to read that translation here, please. God is able to graciously provide you with everything. Everybody say everything. So whatever it is that you have come you want the Lord's intervention, whatever it is. You say, with everything, so that you will always have all you need. He didn't say some. His generosity covers all you need, and there will be no, there will be no dent in his, in his account. Like I explained, using the woman. When the woman breastfeeds, does it finish? No. There's much more. You just want, because if you don't give, so if you don't receive, it's like, you understand, God, that's his nature. He has to give. Like a mother, you need to breastfeed. 
is either you 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 use the pump or the baby the the the, the, child, the baby needs to needs to take the breast milk if not you feel uncomfortable so the same way with god if we don't receive from him like this season that he has brought us into we can't joke with it at all it is written it's part of your story that god will bring you into this season and you must receive it and become that which he has created you to be so that we can also be a blessing to the world. Have all you need with plenty of help. With plenty to help others too. He says with plenty so we can help others too. As scripture says, he gives generously to the poor. His generosity is everlasting. Say his generosity is everlasting. So Luke 5.17 says, the New King James Version he says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of the, every town of Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present. Say, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Tonight, the power of the Lord is here to heal you, to give you whatever you need. At the power of the Lord, we say, we say, we say, the power of the Lord was what? Present to heal them. So the power of the Lord is present to heal you in a, in a generosity measure. More than you need. More than you think. It is an, an overflowing, in an overflowing measure. The power of the Lord is here in an overflowing measure to heal you. I just want us to understand the season that God has brought us into to do whatever it is that you need in life. The power of the Lord is what? It is here. Why would he bring us into this season of his exceeding power? Is it for a show? No. It's to do things in our lives to break what the, every works of the enemy in our lives. It's not for a show. It's to do something. And so we have to receive and so, I want us to understand that God's power is generous in his content. God's power is generous in his content. And when you say content, what is content? Content means the things that are held or are held or included in something. The things that are held or included in something. We are talking about the dunamis, the power, the content of God. This power is present here today. The miraculous power, just like Sister Tolani sang, it's present here today. That is when we say the, um, the God's, um, the, um, the content, the generous power of God. We, I want us to look at Ephesians 1 verse 19. And I'm going to read the Amplified Version. And then I will also read, equally read the Philips translation. So let me... Oh, Ephesians 1, 19. I'll read the AMP, the Amplified Version. Ephesians, let me to go there. Ephesians 1, 19. Amplified. And so... And so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable, say immeasurable. What is immeasurable? You can't measure it. Immeasurable and unlimited. Say unlimited. That's the power we are talking about. <laughs> uh, the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his active spiritual power in us who believe. These are in accordance with the working of his mighty strength, whom which he produced in Christ. This is the power we are talking about. Which he produced in Christ, verse 20, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his what? Own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Now let's look at the... Uh, Philip's version, Philip's translation, Ephesians 1 19. It says, And how tremendous, say tremendous, 
is the power available to us who believe in God. That power is, a, is the same divine power. The same, say the same divine power. Is that same divine power that God wants to rot in your life? The same power. He said the same divine power which was demonstrated in Christ. That same power. That's what he wants to demonstrate in our lives. When he raised him from the dead and gave him the what? The place of supreme honor in heaven. Anyway, all I wanted you to know is what? That is the same what? Is the same power. So we are talking about the, the restoration power. The power that raised Jesus from the dead. Church, I want to ask us a question. Which other power do you know? Because remember we said it's what? Unlimited. Before the restoration power, there were, there, was, there were some powers. Can you tell me those powers? The power at creation, right? The power at creation. Tell me other powers. The power that parted the Red Sea. The power that Elisha and Elijah had exhibited. But God is saying, this power surpasses those power. I mean, if God has said, okay, I will use the power of creation, just so you know that there is nothing. You just have to align yourself to what God is doing in our lives this season. We are talking about this power. If God has used, if God has, was talking about just the power that he used at creation, that was what? That was also a superpower, right? The power that created. But he, he, he said, no, I'm not talking about this power. The power that raised, that means that, that power had never been seen before. People, has, people saw the power, right? The power that he wrought in Egypt by bringing his people. Even the power that David was playing with, all the power of the prophets that you've read. The Bible is telling us that this is not to be what? To be compared. You understand? It surpasses what you have ever seen. And you know, if God has said, okay, the power at creation will still be good. Will still be good. So if God is visiting us with this power in this season, are you telling me that cancer cannot be destroyed? No, please talk to me. Are you talking, telling me that whatever situation you are going through cannot be solved? We're talking about the exceeding power. Look at the adjective that they used in uh, explaining this power. Can we both go back to Ephesians, the Amplified? Yes. The, the 19. 19, please. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be leaving soon, oh, Pastor. Do you, did you see the 19? It said, exceeding great of his power towards, according to the working of his mighty power. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that you may understand, the immeasurable, say immeasurable. So you're saying, oh, you don't understand what I'm going through. Key into the, this power. It says immeasurable. Can you measure it? This is a power that is higher than the power that was, that God wrought when uh, he created the world. Immeasurable. He said unlimited. All you need to is to key. The problem with believers is that you just toy with the word of God. Tonight you are going to pray that you will experience this power. Apostle Paul. I want to experience more because there is more. Remember we said the generosity of God's power. God will never say I can heal you of malaria, um, headache and not heal you of cancer. We are saying that it's immeasurable. We are saying it's unlimited. So whatever situation it is concerning your marriage. So a lot of times you would think, okay, I know God can get me that job, but he can't make me to be pregnant. What? We're talking about the immeasurable and unlimited and what? Look at how they were, this power was described. Surpassing what? Greatness. In and for us who believe. That's the key. As demonstrated. 
in the working of his mighty strength. This is the power we are talking about. This is the power. I want us to quickly look at this scripture. We'll be, we'll to be praying our believing soon. Isaiah 53 verse 1. New King James Version. Isaiah 53. Unlimited power. This is not the power of Elijah. Elijah, Elijah, they put, when they were here on planet Earth, right? They portrayed some powers. We are talking about the exceeding. Church, all you need to do is to connect. To connect. Ex we're going to read the scripture and then we'll pray. E Isaiah 53 verse 1, New King James Version. Can we read? He said what? Let's all read together. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been what? Revealed. When we talk about the arm of the Lord, we are talking about, each time you read the Bible and it talks about the arm of the Lord, you are talking about salvation. You are talking about redemption. We are talking about what? The exceeding power of what? Of God. So I want you to look, let's read it again. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Is what? The, the person whom the arm of the Lord will be revealed. This exceeding power that we are talking about is the person who, what? who believe. You understand? The, the arm of the Lord will be revealed to what? To that person. To whom? To whom? To whom? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Is that person who, is, who has connected to the exceeding power, the great power of God. Can we rise tonight? I want you to put your name there. That Lord, put your name. I, Abiola Peters, I believe in your exceeding power, the generosity of your power. In that situation, tonight, I don't know whatever you want God to, um, his arm. When you talk about his arm, you're talking about his strength. Whatever area that you want the strength of the strength of the Lord to be revealed, I want you to start talking to Him now. Begin to talk to Him. Say, "Who has believed our report tonight?" I, Abiola Peters, I believe your report regarding this situation. The Bible says that by His stripes you were healed. Past tense, Father, I believe your report. I have to see the evidence of your exceeding power in my life. In this area of my life, Father, let me see an evidence, the evidence of your power. Are you praying? Please don't look at me. You have to pray. You have to believe. God has already, he has vis visiting us with the arm of his power, with his strength. He said, whatsoever it is, whatsoever it is, this is not the power that passes. The exceeding power that raised Jesus from the dead. And he's visiting you with the generosity of it. He's visiting you with the generosity of it. The resurrection power that raised Jesus is available to you tonight. Begin to ask, tell him, Father, I, Abiola Peters, in this situation, in that situation, I believe your report. Father, I receive your arm. I receive your arm. The arm of the Lord. Let your arm be revealed in this situation. Let your arm be revealed in that situation. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Father, I believe your report. I believe your report. The generosity of God's power is available to you tonight. Begin to pray. Father, I believe your report. In this area, I believe. I believe. The Bible we just read in Luke, it says the power of God was available to heal them. Are you going to receive it tonight? Are you going to receive it tonight? Father, I have to experience. I'm going to experience your exceeding power. Like never before in this situation, the immeasurable power the, that surpasses, the power that surpasses whatever you have ever seen, the power that would destroy the enemies, is that power, that power re de destroyed the, 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 um, the, the, the um, broke the, 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 what they have put on the tomb, the, the, the steel, and even the, uh, the God's men. We are talking about that power. Father, tonight I receive that power. 
that power that surpasses every power that you have ever seen in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we want to thank you tonight because we know you have visited us, you have visited us in those areas that we need your exceeding power. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. is good all the time hallelujah father we just thank you for your daughter that you have used to bless us this possession lord we pray for her for more grace that the oil upon her will be ever fresh and create insight and revelation in the name of jesus thank you father and lord as she has taught us lord even the world will not stand against her in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. And the people of God say, God is good. How many of you are enjoying his power? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This power is real. This power is what? Let's be seated. We want to welcome everyone joining us around the world at this time. We celebrate you, our online family, and everybody on ground. You are welcome, and I believe as we pray tonight, our prayers will be answered. But very important that when you come to him, you have to believe. Hallelujah. And, you know, this is the confidence that we have in him, that when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Hallelujah. And if he hear us, then we are going to testify. After tonight, after that night meeting, if you know you are going to testify, you can't, you can't sit down, you're going to get up on your face, and you're going to shout, Hallelujah. We, we, don't, we, we believe that we don't have to see before we rejoice. We know it's going to happen. Yeah, hallelujah. He, said, uh, he told the man that is already 90 years old, you're going to have a child. The man was so crazy to believe. He said, it is going to happen. He told the woman that cannot have sex, you are going to have a baby. She was so crazy and said, yes, let it be done to me. According as you have said it. You know, you have to be crazy to follow God. You have to lose your five senses. Put it behind. If God says it, I what? I believe it. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his goodness. I mean, people are already enjoying this overflowing blessing. You know, overflowing blessing. Hallelujah. His generosity. It's, it's making people, you know, he told us in this church. He said he became a failure that God faith. People are just passing the exam. Bought the exam now. The moment he gave us that word, someone just come he tells him, Pastor, I pass. I pass. And these are not small examples. These are examples that you'll be sweating. <laughs> that people have been failing before. Now, you say, I pass it. Because it became a failure. You, you have to stand on the wall. Hallelujah. Amen. And we're enjoying overflow. Hallelujah. You know, someone say money is flowing. Ah, uh, you see? Yeah, I, don't, I, I, I keep receiving money. My, pff, money is what? See him back here. Over. Look. Hallelujah. Amen. Our Lord is good, God. I just love you, God. Thank you, Jesus. God is so faithful. God is so what? Faithful. Are you ready to be blessed tonight? How ready are you? <laughs> uh, please don't forget uh, Sunday service. Hallelujah. We're going to be digging deep into this power. I beg you to be around. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have to get uh, Dickie. Uh, so we have to get that guy. The top four solution Sunday by God's grace. Hallelujah. So I think I'll talk to him. Maybe you can equally talk to him also. Hallelujah. God is good. God will make him available. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Spirit, breathe upon your word. Let the heaven open upon our prayer, upon our prayers, unto you that hear a prayer, that all flesh come. We have come because we trust you. So, Lord, tonight, let it be said that we have been into your presence. Thank you, Father. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we are praying. How many of you know you can't separate God's presence and his power? When you have his presence, you secure his what? 
Hallelujah. Help me this hour and open your Bible. If you have to listen very well tonight to write and listen, please, I beg you. And then when you have to say big amen, say big amen. Because it's going to happen. It's going to what? Pastor said, when you every prayer tonight will be answered. Ah, you see, your amen is even standing on three legs. Ah, church. And that's why you see me, I'm only standing up. It's like, it, that's what I've since my bachelor life. Amen is not scarce. With my tie, I can't forget. I will shout amen when that Jew pray. pray. I shout amen. Then people say, I don't care. You keep looking at me. I left everybody. I left everybody. Oh. Hallelujah. So tonight, hallelujah, I say all prayers shall be answered. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Isaiah 50 verse 7. A man, a man came and preached one time. My servant pastor were there. And I know the car I was driving was a borrowed car for my sister. You know, I can be acting like they saw me bringing car. Why am I saying amen? I, it's, the car is not my own in Africa at that time. So the man said, drive your car. Ah! You know some people drive your car. You say, no, I don't want to drive. I got a car. Don't be feeling cool. I'm feeling sick. That same mood. And the man prayed prayer. I shouted on top of my lung. Car showed up. I just dumped my sister car. Take your car. My shouting has produced a car. Uh, you know, this thing, when you talk about God, you don't have to have that money. You know. Is it just agree with God? He will find a way. Somebody can come and give you a car. Yeah. You know, if, if you, you say, ah, Pastor, somebody will give you a car. Ah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've enjoyed. You know, somebody say in America, they can never give you rent free. I've enjoyed rent free before. Yeah, you said that. You know, they say you can't find money in America. I found money. When we just go to America, we don't have money for carpet. I found one two of $100 bills. $100 bill, it was on the floor. I say, ah, if I pick this money, maybe it's juju money. I say, no, there's no juju money here. <laughs> I'm on the other. If I lie to you, God bear me witness. I see queens. I saw the money like that. $100 bill rolled again. Ah. The thing was looking at me, I was looking at it. Hey. Hey, 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 there's no juju here. I picked my thing. When I opened the money, I was counting it. It was exact money for carpet to carpet all the house. I show up in carpet store. Well, how much is that carpet? How much? The thing that will be slapping me before, I can't go there. I only just came. I can't go and buy carpet. I didn't know when you just come to America. It's not carpet you are thinking. <laughs> you just want to sleep. Amen. I said, I went to the carpet store, Red and Queens. Yeah, far rock away. I said, how much is this carpet? He said, I want the top in the list. He said, how much? He didn't want to look at me. How much is it? He can't count. The I, I see by the one I work for it. You know, he said, you will live in that since it's not built. You have to believe God. You have to believe God. Hallelujah. And when I get, I say, you, you know what they say? They say, you can't find a dime on the streets. You have to work for it. Me, I found it. $100 bill in bail. On the floor. Hallelujah. The weight of the unjust is laid down. I took it home. No, did you catch me? <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know what? When I feel like I'm okay, then one day too, I just felt that right here in Sam's Club, hundred dollar bill were on the floor. I said, Danny boy, this is money. <laughs> You know, but because my, my, my son was there, I said, ah, I have to act right now. <laughs> Maybe then it was not there that day. <laughs> but I said, you know me, I can't lie to you. I'm telling you the truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> the way that people will laugh here is like, you might be crazy, man. <laughs> you know what? I, and because this boy, they say, I said one day, I'm going to take the deer and kill it. They say, no, you can't do it. We're going to couple it for you, dad. Yeah, they told me. Yeah. In American children, they don't train like Africa. You can't tell them otherwise. So we, we don't try to twist our children's head. 
I, no, African thing that I say, ah, this people are no Africa. He said, Dad, go and cut now one. And if you have to kill it, you have to wait for until season. And then you go and get your certificate that you can kill. Hey, hey, I say, Lord, I say, Lord, this guy, this kind country, eh? <laughs> oh, Lord. So I saw the money. So I acted like a good citizen. I took the on the, on the bill and I went to the cashier register and I said, somebody want to buy grocery here. And this money fell. This person, I said, okay, you keep it. Don't spend it. Don't say it's your money. I make sure that these people, you can't go and spend it. I didn't spend it. You can't spend it too. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you sit down, it has done it. I know, I, I can't. Am I, am, I, am I not? Am I stupid to be lying on the altar? Hallelujah. Well, the, anything can happen. Anything can what? As I hear my spirit right now, in this world, God will give miracle cars. Yes, someone receive it. Miracle cars will happen. Jesus, man, you didn't pray. You, you not say for it will come. Aha, Holy Spirit. Aha, thank you, Jesus. You know, I was coming, this afternoon, I was coming, he will give a word. And I was coming, there was something we needed to do. So I, it's, I think I, we need volume of money. So I'm saying, God, God, I just be pray, God, bring this, God, bring this money. And all of a sudden, God just disappointed me. It, it, it just, it blew me out and said, no, you know. I, I said, God, why do you, something was up here before. You now brought it down. So what do I do now? I got so mad. So when I was coming, and I wanted to pray about it, so I said, God, now you have to take over. I just had a word. I don't deliver with many. I deliver with few. Ah! Then I started laughing again. I don't deliver with what? Many. And he gave me the scripture right there. Judge, judge, if, you, you, if you walk with God, you have to hear his voice. Otherwise, you'll be miserable. Judges chapter 7, he now said, when Gideon was going to war, he thought he needed so much. He told me, you think you need that much. And he told me, as your father, say, if you are, if you, that thing happen now, you will not be saying because you gather, you have much. That's why you got it. Now I'm going to kick it away. Hey, God. Someone say, God. I love him all. <laughs> now I was getting mad in the afternoon, but now I love him now. Because he gave me a word at 2640 when we we're on our way here. Hallelujah. From how many people that Gideon gather? Over 30,000. He went to 22,000. God said, ah, 22,000. He went to, he said, too much. You know, for you to gather, was Gideon to gather that how much you think you need. That's it for, to, for the war. Gideon was not stupid. He knew that they need that company. But God now figure he saw Gideon and said, ah, this boy will think that because of that large army. Now God reduced from 22 people to 10. God said, now 10,000 is too much. So now what I want to get now, I already know it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I don't need to, I, I'm going to sleep. <clears throat> What's the meaning of that? Snoring. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, say 300. Imagine 300 from 30,000. Is it 30,000 from the start? To 300. It's not comparable. God said, hey, now deliver now. So when you finish this battle, your head will tell you, you didn't win this war. Invisible force gave it to you. <laughs> so that means there are some people listening tonight. You think you need so much money. You understand? You are saving money for car. It's a lie. That car will come without your saving. Ah, I don't like this amen. I don't like this amen. God will bring it to you. In Jesus' mighty name. He has it in his hand. He has it. Hallelujah. And someone that has what you need, he, the, brain of God, the brain of that fellow is in God. He will turn it. Sell this thing now for this amount. And there's a person who will not know. And the moment they want to sell it, no other person will see it but you. Because God, he said, he said, when, when, when Joshua was fighting, you know what he did? He said, God sent an ambushment. He orchestrated. I mean, God, so God can cause anything to happen. The best chess player, he will crisscross the one that wants to sell a car that is rich. 
You know, there was a testimony. Somebody was in the mall and was saying, I don't have a car, I'm saving. I was talking to bank. Bank and he was getting aggravated in the mall. And there was somebody there, a rich person that just wanted to sell the car. No, it was a dealership. He just brought the car back. You know, people, rich people, they don't reach, actually need it. They have the money to buy a new one. But they bring that back just to get a little money and get another one. Then the woman was arguing with them in the dealership and all that, screaming. You know what the person did? He said, stop, stop, madam, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I, want, I brought the car to trade it in. No more trading. You take this car and go. So all this, if, if the woman had been saying for two years, <laughs> there's a day. There's a day. I say it again in the name of Jesus. A miracle car will come your way. A miracle house. A miracle house. A miracle car will come your way in the name of Jesus. Christ. Because God does not deliver with much, but deliver with what? Few. So that they will, you will know it is God that did it. Somebody say amen to that. I, I believe strongly in this thing I'm talking about. So that you will know it's God that did it. Hallelujah. Something beyond your power. Something beyond your paycheck. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. How much money would the Israelites have to have to take the land of Canaan? He gave it to them. Hallelujah. Be seated. Are you ready for this? For the Lord God will help me. Somebody said that. For the Lord God will what? Help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. It will not hand in shape. And you are sitting down. I don't care whatever you are going through. It will not hand in shame. Why? The Lord will what? Somebody say it at the top of your law. The Lord God will help me. For the Lord God will what? Help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I will set my face like a flint. Hallelujah. And I know, I know, underline your Bible, I know. Someone say, I know. I will not be ashamed. I have a wonderful future and a happy ending. It doesn't matter what is going on right now. I know, so I know. I will not be ashamed. This is dead. We are, not, we are not finished with this scripture. Now go to Easy Bible now. Do you have a media? Everybody go on your phone because they, might, they don't have it there. Look at your Easy Bible. Go to your phone. We need to look at this together. Easy Bible. Everybody at home, go to Easy Bible. Like I said to you, write this thing down. Write it down. God, God said I should say this now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Seven times I'm going to say it. Everybody listening tonight that you here, God will help you. God will help you. On that matter that matters to you. God will help you. Say, God will help you. This is the fifth time right now. God will help you. On that matter that matters to you, this is the sixth time. God will help you. Now, this is the seventh one. On that matter that matters to you, God will help you. God will help me. This is the word of Yeshua. But the Lord God will help you. The Lord God we what? He will help you. Now, look at Easy Bible now. Shaka Paragata. Don't have a dead God. We have a living God. That says it and bring it to pass. Isaiah 58. Let me go to Easy Bible. Everybody, are you there on your phone? Easy Bible. One second, I'll read it to you. Look at what it said. Interesting. Very interesting. Hallelujah. You better say amen. No. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't like it. Okay? The only person, I, I've been with, from seven in the morning, I got up around to four. Hallelujah. Just trying to find God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Look at this now. Easy Bible says, the Lord, the, the almighty Lord helps me. Continuous. The almighty word, Lord, what? Helps me. So I will not be ashamed. I will not be what? Now watch this now. Because I know I will not be ashamed. Look at that one now. I have decided to stand and be strong. Aha, somebody, you have to hear this. I have this, because I know God will help me. I have decided to stand and be strong. I'm not going to be afraid or be dismayed. I know. 
those that do know their God. I know. And because I know God will help me in this April. Concerning anything I want to get, I will be strong and I will not be what? Dismayed. Are you following what I'm saying? I have decided to stand and be strong. You need to do this. Because you know God will help you. You need to stand. That's why he told Jehoshaphat, stand still, be not afraid. I will take over, I will take care of it. The battle is not yours, it's mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to be teaching you tonight. When God sees you, just like they see you now, I saw Pastor with the wife. You understand that? When God sees you, when you are praying, God must not see you. He must see faith first. God must see your faith before he answer your prayer. I'll show you in scripture. Oftentimes, the problem with one of us is that we are standing praying, but there's no faith. And without faith, you can't please him. Write this thing down. When you come before God, the first thing God is looking for is your faith, not you. He saw their faith. He didn't talk about the paralyzed man. He didn't even see whether the man is paralyzed. The first thing he saw is that. He saw their faith. So when, when you come to pray, the first thing is that you must believe. A sitting power is available to those that believe. That's it. That's it. If you don't believe, you'll not be a recipient of it. It's not a cause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, I have said, you see, you see, you see I, I decide to stand and be strong because I know that I will not be ashamed. I'm standing because it's not pride. I'm standing. Why are you? You are going through this problem and you are laughing. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay because I'm standing on a promise. Standing. Standing, standing. The promises of God, my Standing, standing. Oh my God! I am standing on the promises of God. I said, God, we help you. 2024 is the year you will finally get it. Everybody listening tonight, you will be able to sing that song. Finally, finally, the Lord has done it for me. If that look like you say, better hear me. There is glory beyond the grave. Don't just see the grave. Don't see the challenge. There's a glory behind the challenge. Let me read to you. Second Corinthians 4. We already started praying. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 18. Hallelujah. What's this now? Let's read it immediately. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 to 8. I keep hearing this echo. God saying, I will help you. I will help you get a husband. I will help you get a wife. I will help you get that job. I will help you get that house. I will help you. So don't, don't be discouraged. I will help you pass that exam. I will help you. Don't be discouraged. I will help you. That shaka fire. Don't turn off the light around you. I am the light. Don't turn it off. I am the light. Kashaka paradaya. Hebokotolia. I remember one of our daughter. Turn off all the light in the house because she was so tired at the time. At the age, there's nobody, no husband. And I was praying on the phone with a group of pastors. And all of a sudden, God said, get out of this phone line now. So what is this? And called my daughter. Ah, I told the pastor, I'm out. Later, the pastor said, why are you? Why? We don't see you anymore. You didn't hear. Ah, yeah. God, because God, instruction came. So and I called her. When I called her, she picked up the phone. I said, God said, I should tell you, he has given you a husband. She, told, she turned off the light. But light has seen her. There's always the third day, the third day. There's always the third day. There's always, before the fourth day, Pastor Toto, before the fourth day, that decay and, and decay, what? Well, corruption will come. Before you get this grace, it will show up. Oh my God, I don't like the people here tonight. I say before you get this grace, the third, if Jesus ever go three and a half day, there will be this grace. Because there's a word that says, destroy this body on the third day. I will raise it up. So God will not allow you to go to the fourth day. 
That means extra day in your problem, you know, it will not happen. If you can say a better amen, receive help now. Look at the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 4, 17. And we'll go to 17 to 18. Hallelujah. Look at it. For our light affliction. So any problem that you're going through, God says light. Don't, now if God says it's light, don't, don't say it's, it's heavy. Don't do that. You, you know, I was telling you, me as a person, I told you, I was dealing, then the word came. I deliver with few. Hallelujah. For our light affliction, when God says it's light, don't say it's heavy. Pastor, you don't understand my problem. Oh, God, the God, the God that will solve the problem, say that it is light. Hallelujah. It's like, <laughs> the professor said, to solve this problem, is uh, pi, raised to pi raised to power two. You now say, oh, that pi is too little. Raised to power four. You fail. You fail. Don't put heavy. It was a light, it was a light affliction. Which is but for a... If, if, if that thing doesn't change, God is a liar. And God can never be found to lie. He's too holy to lie. He's too holy to... He can never lie. He, God can never walk. What you think is not working is actually working. Because he said all things work together for good for those that love God. But most as Christians, when he say it's not working, it's working. It's what? Working. Which is but for a moment, it's working for us a far more work, a sitting and eternal weight of what? Of glory. Yes, number 18. Why we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not, are not seen. For the things which we see are temporal, it will change. Is subject, someone say it's subject to change. The challenges is subject to what? And it's for a what? A moment. There's a third day, Pastor told us. It's a third day. Because Jesus did not get up the first day, second day, it doesn't matter. There's not a third day. Hallelujah. Even if they seal it, Matthew 27, 62 to 63. Hallelujah. They seal it, even if it's so dark, it doesn't matter. There's a word already on it. On the third day, it will get up. Even if they seal it, no matter how bad tell yourself, God said this challenge is for a moment. And it will work out for a weightier glory. That means the result will be better than the challenge I'm saying. Hallelujah. Don't, don't make your case worse. It's not. Hallelujah. Because he said, I will be with you always. I will be with you all. Look at on the next day, which followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate because they don't want, no matter how they gather to ensure that the word of God will not come to pass, because the word of God is anointed, it will come to pass. He watches over his word to bring it to pass. God watches over his word to what? No matter the darkness and the supremacy of God over them, it will, be, I mean, it will come to pass. He said, look at what they said. While he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days, I will rise. Uh -huh. So when the devil hear the word of God, they go all out to enforce that it will not happen. But God himself has said, that's why I love God. That's why you have to read the word of God. He, he watches over his word. That means it's like somebody making, what that thing, what that thing in Africa that when they are making the, a lot of flies? When they, are, when they are cooking it, there's a lot of fly there, but the owner, the person selling will be driving the fly away. And then we'll be buying it and be eating in Africa. And then, in, you know, some, some of us now, when something, when you are eating food, it fell on the, on the floor. It means you. <laughs> you. In Africa, you jump. <laughs> Somebody will say, Pastor, is crazy. It is mine. <laughs> you know, I was asking somebody yesterday, I said, I said something, say, Pastor, I don't know the joke you're talking about because you say too many. I don't know. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And it's true. So the moon cooking the food is blowing the fly away. Who knows what I'm talking about? <laughs> that one, that one, that one. Hey, hallelujah. And then you get to America now. Your peanut fall on the floor. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> peanut in Africa. You pick your thing and eat it. You know, what, what are you talking? Even in Africa, your meat for meat. 
in your house, your meat fall on the floor. And you want to, in the garbage? My children will say garbage. Ah, I always tell them, you are lucky you are born in America. I tell them every time. They, you ask, see them, they eat the meat fall. They won't eat it. Ah. So that I just get annoyed. But I, sometimes I just remember I'm in America too. So, okay, okay, okay. But I remind them, if you are in Nigeria, <laughs> you will eat that beef. Your mother will fight you. You will throw the beef away. No. Hallelujah. How he said it will rise. But did it rise or not? So our light affliction is for what? Look at this scripture, Psalm 112, verse 4. Light rises out of darkness. Light comes out of your challenges. Tonight, I stand on the authority because of the resurrection power. Light will come out of that darkness. I say, resort, tangible resort, will come out of your trials. Will come out of your affliction. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, it's your affliction. That means... No, it's still good. God recognizes that what? He recognizes there will be a fish on what? Light will come out of it. I stand on this exalted altar that upon every challenge in the house tonight, glory will come out of it. Blessing will come out of it. Testimony will come out of it. Light rise out of darkness. Out of anything the devil tried to do, light of God will come out of it. For the upright though. And it's gracious and full of compassion. God will not ever leave you in your, in your challenge. Look at the scripture. Maybe you have to run with us. Uh, this is the Act 2, 29 to 31. There's a third day. Also told us, there's a third day. You will not see shame. You will not see shame. Because God will help you. The word of God will never be put to shame. I said the word of God will never be put to shame. He said, he said, he said, men and brethren, let me speak freely to you of the Patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Yes, he saw up ahead of time. Yes, therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he will rise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He will what? Rise up the Christ. Yes, that's one. He, he foreseeing this, spoke concerning the resurrection of Christ. That his soul was not left in haste. That's the hell. Nor did his flesh see corruption. And he said, as he is, so are we. God will not leave you in your challenge. He's our heavenly father. And Jesus is the firstborn. Have you ever seen a father that loves one and don't like another one? No. Jesus is the firstborn. So God said, as he is, so are we. So he faced a problem in this world and God raised him out. So no matter what you face, God is all. That's what Jesus was saying. He said, oh my God. Because I live, you shall live also. I came out of it, you have you come out of it also. So right now, in the name of Jesus, by this scripture, God will not leave you your challenges. I thought I would have a believing amen. It will bring you out like he brought Jesus out. Romans 10, 11, I say, do you believe God? If you believe God, let me see your hand. Then if you believe God, you'll never be put to shame. You see, that's why you need that belief. You can never be put to shame. Romans 10, 9. Please, write this thing down. Believe it. Romans 10, 11. I will never be put to shame. No matter how many people gather to be praying against me. I will never be put to shame. How many people gather together and say, Jesus will not come out? He came out. There's a word on it. There's a word on it. So you have to believe that word. Jesus went down believing that word. The three Hebrew boys, they went into the fire that he would deliver. They believed the word. They went into the fire. Daniel went into the land of believing that I would come out. He came out. You know the interesting thing, George? They entered the fire and the Bible said their clothes was not smelling. If you enter African man's, African house, we cook a lot of spices. You cannot enter our house and come out not smelling. You enter, no matter your cologne, you will get some spices. You know, every time you go to Charlie's store there, or you go to Mexican restaurant, eh? or you go to Jamaica restaurant, with your cologne, you come out, you are not coming out the same. You go to Selma, ah! Ghana, your love rice. Eh? 
you are coming out smelling jollof rice. They now enter fire and they come out not smelling. Who is this God? The mighty power. You see, most of us, we don't know the God we serve. We don't know. You know, you hear him on Sunday. He say, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, you don't know scripture and you don't know the power. You say, you, you are missing it because you don't know scripture and you don't know the power. So you are missing out. If you don't know God and the power, you miss out. You have to know him and the power. You say, I know him. You have to know the word. Means that. The word, I want to know the word. That's what the boss said. Paul studied the word for three and a half years. You have to know the word. And then is power. Uh -huh. You become Agiriba. You are untouchable. Daniel knew the word. He said, Daniel, is the God that you serve. Lion saw him and moved back. So when you know the word and you understand the power, you are in, you are formidable to the come of the enemy. Just like Jesus. Principality saw him, they were shaking. He has not near them all. That's why David said, because I know him and the power. If I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me. His presence could note his power. Someone say amen to the heart. For the scriptures say, whosoever believeth on him will not be put to shame. Rise up on your feet right now and say, Lord, I believe you, so I will not be put to shame. On this matter, I believe God. I will never be put to shame. This church will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Just before the fourth day, Jesus got up. Before the fourth day, he got up. You are going to come up. Be seated one minute. Hallelujah. And if shame already occurred, it will restore you. If it's already occurred in your, in your time of ignorance, he's a restorer. He said, I am the restorer. It will restore you in Jesus' mighty name. Look at John eleven twenty five. 25. Remember, he uses the power to advertise, oh my God, the death of Lazarus advertised the power of God. I want to speak to everybody here tonight. The TV in front. Shoko. Can I tell you something? No matter your challenge, hallelujah, your challenge is there because the, the power of God is about to be magnified. Hallelujah. You see, the death just advertise what God can do. If they know, the devil will not bring that problem to your life because he's about to receive a chunk of his life. If they knew, they would not be Jesus. You are going through that problem. Oh my God. Because the scriptures say, He always caused us to triumph. There are everybody in the house tonight. You are going to have victory. He always caused us to what? Triumph. He's not a liar. You have victory. I say you have victory. In Jesus' mighty name. Can you say a better amen? The power of God will be advertised in your life. If you believe it, you show in your amen. Let me see that. Thank you, Father. Now watch this now, church. Go to John eleven twenty five. John eleven twenty five. Hallelujah. Jesus said to to us, "I am the resurrection and the life. I am the power." So, when you have the resurrection power. It doesn't matter the, the, the magnitude of the, of the problem. If you are here, my brother will say, I, I am the resurrection. So forget about it. Anytime I show up, hallelujah, on time God, on time God, I, 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 will, I will fix it. Hallelujah. But listen now, what now happens is that if you go to 43 to 44, hallelujah, Jesus said, roll with the son. Then the, man, the woman said, Listen to this, listen to that. He said, he's already thinking. Jesus now said a word. Have I not told you I am the resurrection and the life? So when you have me, when you have the resurrection power, you are not going to be bothered about the duration of the problem or how bad it is. You know the resurrection power with what? With change. Resurrection power could not change opposition. It will change anything. It will change. The power will change what? And 
death is the ultimate. It changed death. That means it will change anything living. Death is the ultimate. Resurrection power changes it. If you believe in resurrection power, nothing, nothing will be hard in your life. Death is the ultimate thing. But resurrection power, reverse it. So what is it, again, that the power cannot handle? Hallelujah. Jesus had to tell her, have I not told you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So when you believe the resurrection power, you see glory. That's why Paul demonstrated more glory than many of the apostles. He understood the resurrection power. That's why I said, I know this power. Once I know this power, uh -uh. Now, what's this now, church? Because this power is about to advertise. <laughs> He's about to be advertised in your life. Oh, my God. Look at Ephesians 1.19 now. Ephesians 1.19. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 1.19. TPT. Hurry up me there. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, he, he that was in the grave came out. Say, Lazarus, come forth. Did he come out or not? And that's what God is saying in Ezekiel 37. He said, the dry bones, you see, grave does not just mean six feet. In the book of Ezekiel, go and read from one to the end. God demonstrated that grave does not just mean six feet. It means dry neck, nothing working, stagnation. When hope is lost, but God said, with the resurrection power, even when hope is lost, hallelujah, the resurrection power will fix it. What, when hope is all lost, resurrection power will work, fix it. It will fix it. Hallelujah. I pray, look at it, I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. Tonight, everybody at home, because of infallible proofs, in the name of Jesus, as I speak it on this altar, a man, Elias was a man of like passion. He said, let there be no rain. And there was no rain. I say on this altar, every member of this church, you are going to experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, now, uh, made available. Church, that's it. Underline your Bible. This power is made available to who? Those that believe. So, when God sees you this season, you must see faith. Don't go to God without faith. Your prayer is useless. Quote me anywhere. Hallelujah. This power, this is New Testament though. This power is available. No matter what, no matter how bad the situation is. If you believe in resurrection power, you'll see your change. Like I snap my finger. Kababa. Okay, let go this prayer. <laughs> I believe it though. I snap my finger. In the name of my, my, my God, miracle will happen in your life. He said, he said, within the think of an eye, we shall be changed. If you believe tonight, he said, this power, immeasurable power, is available to them that believe. Everybody that believes tonight, this power will change your position. It will change your position. This power will change the position of this church. When it changes, that power is used to advertise. Then your life will be an advertisement of this immense power. After tonight, your power will advertise this power. Ah, Father, 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 I'm available. Let this power, resurrection power, oh my God, oh my God, begin to advertise your power in my life. Begin to advertise your power in my life. Then your life will be an advertisement of this immense power. Lord, I want to advertise uh, this immense power. Lord, uh, let it walk through me right now. This is the mighty power. The mighty power. Let it walk in me right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, thank you, Father. Be seated. The mighty power is here tonight. I say the power is here tonight. Please, do you have time or you want to go? Give me more. Ah, what is this? When did I even start? Ay, ay, ay. God is good. So great does not just mean six feet. Hallelujah. Anything they call is final. There's no finality. When you have resurrection, but there's no finality. No, no, no. It cannot be done. Resurrection power. <laughs> Hallelujah. Dry. What? Resurrection power will bring freshness. Hallelujah. I say no solution. Ah, uh, Resurrection power will provide a solution. Hallelujah. It provides solution to death. 
Hallelujah. Listen, I said this power, I want to say it again. Then your lives will be an advertisement of this immense power. Do you believe? Lazarus, chapter 12, verse 9. Hallelujah. Look at it now. They did not come to see Jesus. They came to see Lazarus, which the resurrection power has raised. When you begin to be a recipient of this power, oh my God, oh my God. That's what, at that time Jesus said, Ten, we hold your skirt. We are going to with you to church. You don't need to preach because they can see. Hallelujah. Ah, in this church, our lives in this church, we advertise this immense power in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at, look at this. Look at it. John chapter 12, verse 9. Quickly. Hallelujah. Quickly, quickly. My God. Now, a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus. You see that? They didn't come to hear Jesus. Sake. Only. They didn't go to oh, for Jesus' sake only. They came for Jesus, but not only him. But they actually came that they might see also. That they might also see Lazarus, whom he has raised from the dead. So Lazarus was advertising the power. Look at the power he has raised me. Change your position. I used to be dead. I'm no longer dead. You know, there was a man that said, they, they used to know that he was blind. He used to beg. But when God spat, the resurrection, spat and gave him eyes and said, go on. Work. He said, they say it is him. It is not him. Hallelujah. He started advertising what? That power. This year, even this season, you will advertise this power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Do you believe it? Isaiah 41, verse 10. Supernatural power by the, by the resurrection. You are receiving supernatural help tonight by this resurrection. But there will be help. There will be help from above. I see there will be help from above. I see there will be help from above. Kasha kaparadoze belegedelea. Eke pali atapaya. Hey, I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. By this supernatural help, there's somebody here. You don't have enough, but you'll be. You will see 100,000 in your account. <laughs> hey! So say, hey! It's my supernatural help. I'm not talking about symbols. I'm talking about what God can do. Supernatural help. And it will happen so fast for you. I shut up and let it open like it There's nothing God cannot do. Three months. A man broke. And they said, Obededium is now rich. Three months. It's the same yesterday. Today. I believe it was the power of God. Power enter his house. And power change poverty. Every poverty in the house. Oh, you're your fuck your Lord and go. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Enter into a new realm. From poverty to riches. Aha. And yet, instead of, instead of saying riches. From poverty to abundance. Everybody listen to me if you can believe. By the right direction power, your position financially will change. Go test your address again. Every lack in the house, you have lived below. You have lived below for too long. You have lived below for too long. Hallelujah. This year, you will see physically Hundred thousand dollars in your account. Ashaka parato sebe. How shall this happen? How the power of the highest, this mighty power. If the power, if the power can put a baby in the womb, that power will put money in your account. If the power can put baby in the womb, akabarado sebe belegene ya. He keperedo zabalaya. May God buy you a house. Everybody listen to now. May my God buy you a house. By the right direction. He said, I will buy you houses. You will live in houses that you did not pay for. I believe God. You will live in houses you did not pay for. He is the God that gave you the power. To make well. Receive the power right now. I hear a word. Change your story. 
Change your story. Why you look for the dead among the living? I used to be broke. No more. No more. No more. I used to be sick. No more. By the resurrection power, receive divine health. Receive solution. Every area that matters to you, receive solution. You cannot handle it, but resurrection power will handle it. I say we handle it. They have already given up on Lazarus, but resurrection power will not give up on anything. Oh my God, he will not give up on anything. He showed up and changed the story. People that were crying before started laughing. People that were crying. Maybe you have been crying in any area of your life. For now, God will convert. Cheers to joy. Cheers to joy. Thank you, Jesus. He said, until now, you have asked nothing. Ask in my name and you shall receive. He said, ask and you shall receive. That your joy might be full. Tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, in that area, your joy shall be full. But the resurrection power. This is night. We're not going anywhere. I locked the door. We're going to finish now. Oh, my God, my God. I said for two one ten. Fear not. Someone listen tonight. Fear not. You will receive help. For I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. God is boasting. He's boasting. Yes, I will help you. God, there's a yes on your matter. I say there's a yes on your matter. By the resurrection power, receive your yes now. I say, receive your yes. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my, my righteous hand. Papa Shaka, I don't say Debelia. You will not fail. You will not fail. Papa Shaka Now listen, listen now. Let's go to Mark. Sit down for a minute, please. Ah, I can't let you go. No. You can if you want to go, but I as your pastor, I'm not letting you go. Listen, we're gonna finish this thing. Hallelujah. There are some meetings you will go and you will never remain the same. Anna went to a meeting and never remained the same. He got an answer. I had a witness before I came here. You will get an answer. I don't like that. Amen. I say you will get an answer. Anna has been going, nothing happened, but today something will happen. Hallelujah. I should tell somebody, you have lived in shortage of money for so long. You will swim in my glory. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will grant you my glory and grace. And I will show you my kindness. I will bring heaven resources. Father, let thy will be done. On earth as it's in heaven. Heaven is coming to your house. From today, in the name of Jesus, heaven on heart lifestyle. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every hold of toiling, I will break it. I will change it. Hallelujah. Somebody here now, take a new garment. By the resurrection power, take a new garment. Poverty is not yours. Poverty is not yours. Lack is not yours. Failure is not yours. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. <laughs> I've never heard this word before. But I'll say, I'll say, I will baptize you with my riches. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory is in the house. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. Let's read it, please. Please sit down. Sit down. You're not going anywhere now. You're not going. You, if you like, tell me that I waste time. Yes. This one, I'll take all the things. Put everything on me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Yes. And again, he entered Capernaum after some days, and it was hard that he was in the house. Jesus is in the house. Number 2, quickly, quickly. Immediately, many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word of, he preached what? The word to them. Yes, number three. 
Then they came to him, bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. Yes? Number four. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic man was what? Lying. You see that? Number five. Now, that's not easy. Oh. I think Pastor had demonstrated it here for us one day. It's not easy to carry men to the roof. When Jesus saw their faith, even a man that has no correct leg to fall from the roof, you, you have to be very careful. When Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus did what? Now watch this now. You know, the first thing that Jesus will see is that the man that they are carrying is paralyzed. He didn't step. He saw their feet. That's why I said to you, when you are in problem, the first thing God will say as a Christian in you is your feet. Don't lose feet. Ah, don't, 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 don't lose the feet. Don't, don't matter the age. He saw their what? He saw their feet. Hallelujah. So when you call for God's help, hallelujah, you must have what? Faith. You must have what? Hallelujah. And that's why Ephesians 119 says, this power, and what is the exceeding greatness of this power towards us who believe is for those that believe. Go there. Ephesians 119. I'm going to oversize it. But Paul said, I know I've said it before, but it is not for this, so I will say it again. Look at Ephesians 119. Not King James. New King James Bible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, then we'll pray. One on one prayer and then I'll let you go. Hallelujah. But are you blessed? Look at this. Look at this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? This is the result of power. Towards who? Us who believe. So we can be 100 in the church. Only five can believe. That's why people testify and people don't testify. Because they believe. It's not God. Though you cannot, it's not see. You know, can I tell you something? <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. I like this. Bishop Oedipo. Hallelujah. A man came to Winners one time and he was testifying. Bishop was sitting there. And he said, I have been to deeper life. This problem did not go. I went to redeem. The problem did not go. I was a member of Equa. The problem did not go. But when I came to Winners, the problem went away. Bishop got up and said, take the microphone for that person now. He said, take the microphone. He said, it's you, you are the problem. The same power that is in these winners is the one that is in deeper life. It's the same God. There's no two God. It's that God. It's you. You don't receive at that time. That's why you remain the same. So don't come and teach everyone. They tell everybody and say they'll be moving from church to other. It's not church. It's faith. Oh, Lord. Get to answer. It's not church. It's faith. If you, you change your mind, the man will pop up. It's not church. It's your word. I'll read again. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Towards us, who according to the world, no matter where you go, if you don't believe, no working of this power. I can't teach error. It's not in me. I will never do it. This is it. I'm showing you the scripture. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that means we are all going to experience this power because we believe. That's why I want to say. In the name of Jesus, because God said he will help us and we will not see shame. I want to declare in the name of Jesus, your problem will not end in shame. Ah, Lord, please help me and say amen now. Your problem will not end in shame. It will not end in defeat. It will end in victory. There's a wonderful future and a happy ending for you. In Jesus' mighty name, I am persuaded. I am persuaded. It will not end in shame. As your pastor, I say I am persuaded. Are you persuaded? Are you convinced? My tomorrow is okay. I have a mind now. It shall be wonderful. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 3. Look at this. Second Timothy. They were laughing at Abraham. Abraham said, I'm convinced. I won't end without the child. I won't end without being married. Abraham said, I'm convinced. He, he was convinced beyond reasonable doubt. Because I know. Because he believed he that said. <clears throat> There's a word on your matter. Stand on that word. God has given you a word. Don't, don't lose the word. 
If God says it, you will do it. Never lose the word. If you are going through any problem, if you don't have a word, there's a problem. Look for a word. You have to have a word. He said, you know, even the devil, listen now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That I love you. You know what the devil said? Like he said, destroy this body. He will raise it. So devil know when you have a word. They know. And they will find that word. But you don't lose that word. Jesus never lost it. And on the third day, so there's a word. Just hold on to that word. Hold on to the word. Hallelujah. And all shall be fine. And all shall be what? Second Timothy 1 12. Look at this. Look at this now. Are you sure? For I know, I'm standing for that place. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Do you know who you believe? I want you to write down. Do, you, do I know who I say I believe? And am I persuaded? You have to have that in your dictionary. If you know who you believe and you are persuaded, you are going somewhere. I know, I know where that man will end. I know where that, what? that man will end. Hallelujah. So it's not going to end in shame. It's going to end in what? Victory. And look at this scripture. We're just standing up because we're going to pray one or two prayers and then let you go. Look at this scripture with me. Luke 8, 22 to 25. Look at it. There was a word. We are crossing to the other side. What's the word for this year? Overflowing. Immediately Jesus said there's overflowing. Come to church on Sunday, please, I beg you. The moment Jesus said there's, there's a, we are crossing to the other side, you know what happened? The devil, what other side? You are not going any other side. What did he bring? Storm. <laughs> because other side is better. See, other side of symbol is married. The other side of a barren person is fruitful children. But the devil will fight it. But look at what now. You need this faith for this resurrection power to work. Watch this now. Okay. Ah. One day, Jesus said to the disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat. Who said that? Who said the word? Even God said something. You need power. Everything in the Bible, for it to be actualized, you need power. It will just be there. Because Jesus said it, it doesn't mean it will happen. What is now? 23. As they sail across, Jesus settled down for his, a nap. But a fierce... No, look at it. It's not storm. Someone say it's not storm. Hey, this one will be storm. Fierce. Someone say fierce. The storm, when the devil is mad, the devil don't want to see the word of God fulfilled. You don't understand. And he has demons. Hallelujah. That's why somebody can tell a woman, doctors never have baby on their back. You never have a child. A mortal woman said that to him, another, and there was no child. Uh, you don't understand. Devil, he liked to fight what God said. And God they said, God said there will be no barren in his house. But if the if if Anna closed his mouth, Anna will remain barren. From the time of John the Baptist, <laughs> you need power. The power is in this church. Hallelujah. Fierce, what, what? Fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filled with what? Now, this is English. Show. It was filled with what? And they were in real danger. Did, did the water not touch Jesus? Hey, if water went a boat, will it touch the person? No matter where you are in the boat, will it touch you or not? Okay, all right, 24. 24. The disciple went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are going to drown. Ah, uh, Jesus woke up. He just woke up. He was not shouting. And rebuked the wind. Power. Is it, that the same mighty power? You know, it's the resurrection. No, no contrary thing against you right now. It will stop. Oh, you see your amen. And the raging world wave, suddenly the storm stopped. And all was calm. A crazy man, no understand though. The storm understand is a master. May you begin to walk in dominion. Restoration power give you dominion. Shut up, Twenty five now. What's the twenty five? Every every noise of the devil around your life, I command it to be silent. In Jesus' mighty name, there will be calmness around you. In Jesus' name, then he asked them. Look at now. What do you ask them? Where is your faith? You see, this is, if you, this is the only thing you get. The water came in. 
because you have no faith. What I give and drive it and you have drove that thing back. See, Israel, where is your faith? That's why you say you are dying. Where is your faith? When you have this power, there's no shame. The same way the shame will come, you can open your mouth. Shame, go back. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So I say to you tonight, it will not end in shame. Can you say it better? Amen. Thank you, Father. Now we're going to pray this prayer. Let me, let me just cut it from here. How many of you want your joy to be full? I want to read the scripture to you and you're going to say, by the resurrection power, in this area of my life, my joy must be full. He told me, he, he will answer, me too, I will, I will pray for five minutes. So I will not say anything. I need, I need to pray. Someone say, Pastor, I need to pray. I go forbid. I'm not a guru. You know, there are some pastors, they just, they think they don't need prayer. Me, I need. Matter of fact, do you know something? I need prayer more than you. You don't know. Some of you are not even praying for me anyway. If you pray for pastor, say amen. Ah, you can't lie in the church, oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, what? Have mercy. You have to pray for your pastor. Ah. One time in Africa, in the church, we just found that offering was just going down. Ah. The church was not like before. Ah. The pastor was so concerned. I saw my uncle. He was so concerned. He said, what is going on? Ah. Ah. Was, they were, one day, finally he said, he went to ask God, God, what is going on? I'm not in sin. What is going on? Then God just opened her and told him, my daughter that prayed for the church is not at home. Ah. The mother, the woman at that time is in America with the grandchildren. You see, that's one that went on his knee praying for the church every time. That's why you saw what you are seeing as a pastor. Hallelujah. So there are some people that pray for what? Pastor. Hallelujah. From that day, pastor formed chain, chain of prayer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So it's very important for you to pray. Because when you're praying for the pastor, you are equally praying for the church. Now go to John 16, 24. John 16, 24. We're going to pray for five minutes and then we'll go. Is it all right? I know it's almost nine, but today is good. Tell me, Pastor, make us 39. I'll, because I will enjoy your blessing too. This thing will happen. No? There will be results. Hallelujah. By, result by what? Restoration power. Now, what's this now? Until now, you have asked nothing. Hey! Someone say, hey! Until today, you have asked no. Now, maybe you have been asking. That's why the matter. There's no faith beside you. Now, it's fresh. Lord, I have this faith. Oh, I have this faith. I must experience resurrection what? power over this matter in my life. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. So you must put Jesus' name. Oh. Those people in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And then, you know, some people, when I say faith now, you know, faith flow. You don't, I don't ask you to muster. I have faith. I have faith. It's not strength. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You know, say, ask and you will receive. That's what I need. Ask and you will. Walk. That's what he told me. If you ask tonight, you are going to receive. He told me, I had him. Ask and you will walk. receive. That your joy may be what? So on that matter that matter to you in five minutes, your joy shall be full over it. He said, you believe, please, I beg you, in Jesus' name, say, ask. It's not like you, you will receive it. Go on your knee and pray. Everybody at home, you may hear a silent. We are not finished because I want to pray too. Five minutes. This is uh, 8.56. So by 9.01, we'll call the prayer and we'll share the grace.
Hallelujah. Bring your prayer to a close. Yeah, I'm excited. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bring your prayers to a close. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, it will end in victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will not end in shame. It will not end in shame. It will end in victory. Because God will help us. He will use this mighty power to advertise himself in our life. So if you know and you are sure of it, that it will end in victory, shout hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. We give you all the glory. Lord, I'm confident and I'm persuaded. Beyond reasonable doubt that you cannot lie. I know. And that's why we are stand. We stand now. And we are strong. Because we know it will not end in shame. We know everyone will have a testimony. So the married will be pregnant. The unmarried will, be, will, be, will get married. People will have their homes. People that don't have car will have their car. People without a job will get a better job. Yes, they will get a job. Daddy, people that are already going decay or they are already seeing shame in any area. Father, because you are a restorer, Lazarus started seeing decay, but you came and said, if you believe, you shall see the glory. We believe tonight. So in this house, every member will see your glory. If you believe, you shall the Lord. I'm in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, the message shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. That's all we got tonight. Not because we don't have much prayer to pray, but because we are out of time. Thank you so much for bearing with me and accepting me, giving you extra minutes. Hallelujah. And uh, God will give you extra blessing. In Jesus' mighty name. Love you guys. Good night.